Welcome, everybody, to the newest edition of it's season four now of Gridiron Japan officially. Wow. It is John and myself, um, Aaron, our, our third our third man in the booth, our, our dandy Don Meredith, if you will, um, I think may have overslept. So Aaron <laughs> Ellis is not able to join us tonight. And if he is able to if he is able to join us, um, he'll be he'll be popping in soon, hopefully. So it is John and I on kind of an eventful last couple of days here in Japan with earthquakes popping on both ends of Han- mm. both ends of the country your end up and up you know up where you're at in Tokyo um and down on my end farther down down south in Kyushu so with all that buddy let's talk some with set that aside uh, mm. you know for a little bit here and we'll talk some football and we're talking this is our this is part 1 of our X League preview and tonight we are going to look at the top teams, yeah. um, Fujitsu, Obik, and Panasonic. And uh, I don't know, John, where do where do we start with every? Where, where do we start? Do we just start at the top and work our way down on tonight on this one? So, so hi, Greg. Yeah, um, it's a different. Yeah, so I mean, we have the three big teams in Japan, the three teams that have made the championship. I think they're the only teams in the past when was the last team that made a championship uh, maybe ibm made a few uh, in the yeah. last decade but other than and that, obik and obik uh, well yeah so obik panasonic yeah. and fujitsu are the the, the title contenders would say the the ones that could win the championship um fujitsu obviously frontiers have won a whole ton of them recently they've the, been the preeminent team but games between themselves and the seagulls and impulse have always been close so there's really you could say there's a gap between frontiers seagulls and impulse between frontiers and the other two uh but there's definitely a gap between those three teams and everyone else so without like uh ruling anyone else out we could say basically we're talking about the title contenders the main title contenders tonight right and we can look at them in all kinds of ways so obviously there was the spring games you know there was the pearl bowl preseason tournament up here in the Tokyo area, there was the Green Bowl, a couple of games for Panasonic down in Kansai, the Osaka area. And they faced off in the spring this season for the second time, second year in a row. Last year, for the, they played in a thing called the Kobe Bowl, which is a, a preseason bowl game that's been going for a long time. It's it's always a, it's sort of an invitational one. Normally, it's a college versus X League team, you have Finies, you have Challengers, you have Impulse, usually against one, one of the Kansai colleges. But over the last couple of years, they've made it Fujitsu and Panasonic. Last year was a tie. This year, Panasonic won a 13 3. But with all the spring games, as we've said many times before, they don't really matter because they're essentially preseason. The results don't matter. You know, right. they matter to some teams, but because they're not playing starters, uh, at all in some of those games, it's really hard to take much from them. It's essentially like the NFL preseason. You're seeing a lot of names that you won't be seeing once things get serious. So yeah, in terms of how we can look at it, I guess the first thing we can probably do is just look at the ins and outs. You know, the okay. players who've come in, the players who've left, and see how the rosters stack up. Obviously, Frontiers are the defending champions. They've been the preeminent team over the past decade. And actually, this season, you could say they've gotten weaker. Now, that's a a kind of a bold claim for a team that's been so dominant. But when you look at the players coming in and the players going out, they've lost a right. lot of big names. Yeah, big they've names. had retirements. And, uh, yeah. you know, friends of the show have retired. And... Uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know really what's, you know, are the new guys going to be able to step up to their level um, of the guys that they're replacing? Yeah, so for Jitsu, I mean, they brought in an all-line guy from Challengers, and but and there's a couple other players, but basically it's all like college kids. So 
I'm not that familiar with a lot of the names that are coming in. I've heard good things about some of them, but they're still unproven. And I don't really, looking at the list of names, I don't expect any of them to be starters in year one. You know, there's there's a lot of people in front of all of them at all of those positions. Maybe the tight end, I think, maybe has a chance. But um, the players that they've lost, so obviously al won Adiemi. Mm-hmm. The who has been on the show and you know has been on the NFL network and is probably the, one of the most well known players to anyone who's watched football in Japan and arguably the greatest, one of the greatest ever players in Japan. Um, just won his ninth <laughs> title <laughs> and he retired, you know, and he was part of the, the dream ball team for Japan, took down the Ivy League, so he went out on a high. They, they just got the rings this week, actually. Oh, they, really? His, his ninth ring. I have to take a picture now. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, it's his, uh, his eighth. That, sorry, not his, ninth. It's his eighth title. Okay, so they, yeah. yeah. He got his eighth championship. So, um, yeah, they've just they've so much silverware. Sometimes it's hard to keep up. But he's gone. They've also lost uh, Kobayashi, Yutaro Kobayashi, who is their bookend left tackle probably the best offensive lineman in Japan over the last decade, decade and a half. Um, Usui, Naoki Usui is another outstanding offensive lineman. They've lost Shuhei Takeuchi, who's a linebacker, one of their sort of well-known heart-of-the-team type players. And Kyohei Kokaji, a wide receiver, has gone across to Seagulls, to Obik. So they've had five Big retirements, you know, and you could say at least two of those are two of the best players at premium positions in the league over the past decade. So definitely, they haven't brought in anyone who would be at that level, at least now. We don't know how some, obviously, the young players will sort out. So that's why I said I think Fujitsu's roster compared to last year is a little bit weaker. You know, you can't really, you can't really replace Adi. Adi is right. obviously, you know incredible player kobayashi as well just an incredible player so um yeah and then yeah so it's it's it'll be interesting because i think you know there's been a little bit more movement on some of the other teams so it'll be interesting to see if they can their coaching has always been top notch you know they've, they've it's always been a next man up type of situation with them they've yeah. strength and depth at, at a lot of positions but um Maybe they're and not they have, quite as strong as they were last year, so it'll be interesting right. to see how that works out. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously the coaching, you mm. know, Pichutsu's got the best coaching staff, and we know that, you know, the guys who are coaching the defense are the best in the business. So, mm. um, you know, you combine the coaching staff and just the professionalism with just that talented team, and, you know, we could, you you know, as we go, as we go along during the season, you know, we're going to have moments where there are going to be moments where Fujitsu, you know, might not have its best game, but they still are the odds on favor to, you know, repeat again as champions. Um, well, due to the way that they've rescheduled uh, or they've reformatted re the league. Yeah, reformatted, reinvented, whatever way you want to describe it there's a six game regular season and the big teams won't be playing each other in those six games. So I kind of went down through it the other day and I can't see any way that Fujitsu, Obik or Panasonic lose a regular season game. So I expect those three to go 18 and all between them. So each of them should, I mean, it would be a major shock if any of them loses a game. I, I expect all three of them to go six and all, and then right. we'll see how it shakes out in the playoffs because it's not easy to see given the current information exactly the seedings, how the seedings will work. It's not like last year where you were, it was easy to predict the seedings even before the season started. So I don't, I mean, these talking about Fujitsu being a little bit weaker, this will only really come into play either in the semifinal or in the rice bowl when they're facing off against the impulse or seagulls. Right. Uh, and with so. the four, because well, the league now, I mean, they've got three divisions. And so mm -hmm. with the three divisions, are we going to have kind of what we had back in the seventies and eighties with the NFL three um, in each, you know, your three divisions and then your wild card, or is it's it going a to be a little bit 
difficult to make out, but from what I can see, it's the top eight teams. Okay. So the divisions are geographical, maybe for reducing travel, travel and expenses, costs, but yeah. they're not divisions as in like you win your division and then you're in. Obviously, if you do win your division, you will be in because, right. you know, the way it's set up. But eight of the 12 teams will reach the playoffs. So okay. I think, yeah, we can pretty much guess who's going to be in the playoffs already. I think there's a couple of, maybe there's one or two that are on the bubble, but um yeah i would expect all three teams to go unbeaten and there is a semi-final and final so you know it'll be an eight game season i think it's semi-final and final right do they have uh i don't think they i just i have to go back now and look at it again but i i think it's just semi-final and final. let me just uh, bring it up okay uh rice ball tournament so yeah, rice bowl, rice bowl tournament. So it will be uh, twelve fifty. Ah, uh, no, I think they have quarterfinals. Do they? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a little bit. Uh, I'll have to go back now and look at that again. I I did it. I think there might be quarter. Oh yeah, so there's eight teams. Yeah, so there'll be an eight team. Yeah, so it'll just start off with yeah, quarterfinals and then yeah. rice bowls. So you will have a, I mean, the champions, the the two teams that make it to the rice bowl will play nine games this season. It's still very few, right? Um, but so, yeah, you, you, I'm imagining that there will be a seeding for the playoffs. So you would imagine that really, whatever weaknesses Fujitsu have. Uh, won't really matter until semifinal time, <laughs> you know. Until they have, yeah. So, yeah. There's quarterfinals, semifinals, and then rice ball. I have it up here on the thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think if you just compare the roster this year to the roster last year, those big names, you know, Adiemi, Kobayashi, Usui, Takeuchi, and Kokaji, those are all top-notch players. Some of them are just you know all-time legends. Mm -hmm. so, I don't think. Anyone coming in is going to be at that level. So definitely, I think it's fair to say Fujitsu is a little bit weaker than it was last year in terms of its roster. And with Fujitsu maybe yeah. taking just a slight step backwards, mm. next up, you know, battling for number two is, mm. is always is Panasonic and Obic. And I know mm. we've talked about this, you know, before we recorded and, and, and we're giving the slight edge to Obic on this one because, um, I, you know, I just, it, it from the way it looks with what's coming up, I think Obic has the edge. I kind of saw, I mean, even last year in the Rice Bowl with Panasonic, <laughs> mm -hmm. I just saw Panasonic just kind of, you know, just how do I want to say? They, they couldn't, they couldn't knock, they, 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 they've been knocking at the door, but they couldn't get through the door. And I just think that, the way that game ended, it's like, oh, it, it just seemed to me that Panasonic is kind of, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to have a hard fight making it back to the Rice Bowl this year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think they've been better than Obic over the last five years. Right. Obviously, Obic won a title. Panasonic have won one since 2015. Obic won in 2020. They won in the, mm -hmm. the really short, the COVID year, the first right. year of COVID, when it was a really short tournament. I think there was only like three or four games that whole season, including the Rice Bowl. But um, yeah, Panasonic is kind of in the same situation. I'm just looking at you know the players. So they brought in, they have a new tight end, Caleb Phillips, who played for Hawaii, the Rainbow Warriors, you know, D1 FBS team. So a lot of former Hawaii players have played in Japan. How good he is, obviously, we don't know. But their tight end last year was Dax Raymond, who, you know, mm -hmm. spent time with the Steelers and Chicago Bears, was excellent. So it'll, it'll be hard to live up to that level. That, I think Dax was, you know, an excellent player. I, I, the big thing for me with Panasonic is the players that they've lost, like through retirements or whatever, they're... The passing game, I think, has taken a big hit. So Ishiuchi, their quarterback, yeah. they, you know, they were using that kind of like a dual quarterback system yeah. last year. Yeah. 
uh, Ishiuchi obviously being one of them. So he's retiring. Shea Fields is gone. Leon Shea Fields, who's also another like you know uh, NFL experienced uh, player. Dax Raymond is gone. Kido, there are other excellent receivers as well. So you know one of their two quarterbacks and arguably three of their top pass catching target uh, pass catchers are gone. So. You know, they, they don't have an American quarterback. Uh, so it's, you know, they only have one. I don't know really what they're going to do for a quarterback this year, but they've replaced the tight end with another American tight end. But, you know, Takato Kido and Shea Fields, hmm, that's, 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 and they lost obviously Jamal moved across, what Jamal Watanabe moved across to Obek the year before. So, yeah. They've definitely taken a big hit in personnel on the in the passing game. So that's and uh, you know the other names then like they, Abutani, they're one of the best O line guys. Kelly Shoichi Igwe, one of the D line. Who else did they lose? Akiyama, one of their better deep defensive backs. Saeki, uh, Eta Saeki, the older brother. So they have two brothers on the um, Shotaro, no, what is it? Uh, the Saiki brothers, Shintaro, is it? And Eita. So Eita is the older brother. He's retired. Like they they've lost a lot of big names too. They brought in a lot of young players. It's very similar to Fujitsu, but you know, I think for that, like maybe Fujitsu one is, you know, they lost all line talent, they lost a receiver, and they lost a defensive back. But for Panasonic, you could say they've lost four names from the passing game four of them like you know most important mm-hmm. names the passing game and that's going to be that's going to be tough to deal with um I was well, yeah because you've think... got to relearn all that chemistry all that chemistry mm-hmm. is now gone so they've yeah. got to recreate it and uh, you know I mean it, it's it's easier said than done sometimes yeah so you know Sheffields keto Dax Raymond I don't know how they're gonna overcome those losses we'll see we'll see how it goes um and then <laughs> obik is a little bit different because obik obviously does turnover every year obik has lost some players i would say that the biggest names going out of obik cardell rawlings the defensive line who played for elecom previously was excellent for them uh long time servant yuki ek wide receiver Kei Zaburo Isagawa is obviously is, you know, one of their best defensive backs for a long time. He went and played semi-pro in the States for a while as well. Isagawa did. Uh, Captain, Talisman. You know, these are a lot of guys uh, who played on the Japan team as well, various Japan right. teams. And then Toru Hirasawa, who came across from Deers, who was a, an excellent linebacker. So they, they lost four sort of top names, but they brought in players. That's the big difference between Obi and the other two. So Kokaji, as I said, he the wide receiver came across from Frontiers. Dexter Carr Jr., they brought in an offensive lineman from Morgan State, the Bears, D1 FCS. Akimitsu Mori is back from Minerva. He was the Seagulls uh, tight end for a decade, basically, until 2020. And then they have two really interesting Young defensive guys, Sugano, who played for Syracuse, was on the Japan team as well. Uh, Yosuke Sugano, he went, he was Syracuse Orange, obviously D1 FBS. He's back in Japan. He's with Obik. And Sean Ray, Tr- uh, sorry, Sean Ray Trotter from KG Fighters, uh, who was in the Hula Bowl, I think. And uh, one of, if I'm not mistaken, he was one of two or three Japanese players who's who are in the beast, you know, the, the athletic, yeah. the guide, the NFL draft guide. So yeah. I think uh, he might have been in that. I think it was him. And I think, uh, I think it was Rintaro, maybe the other, so like the Twin Towers, the two big, massive, tall young guys who are both on Obik now. So Obik lost some players, but unlike... Fujitsu and Panasonic, I think they brought in some interesting names. So their defense now is going to be interesting with those uh, two young, rising Japanese talents. And obviously, Kokaji, like taking him from Frontiers, I think, Speedster, that's going to be a, a big addition to their wide receiver room. 
Dexter Carr Jr. I don't really know a lot about him. Played well in in the spring, but as we said, you know that's thing. And right. Mori says, "Oh, Akim to Mori." Like obviously, at his age, he's not going to be. But I mean, he's one of these sort of talismatic players, you know, mm-hmm. um, club legend. So maybe his value is more in also like developing younger players and just you know being a leader and you know ab- creating an atmosphere and stuff like that. Also, a very good player though in his own right. But kind of getting up there, so yeah, it's a it's a different approach. Um, when you look at the three rosters side by side with last year, mm-hmm. I would say Obik is a little bit better. You know, they lost some names, but I think they've actually brought in they brought in more than they lost. But Impulse and Frontiers are a little bit worse. Maybe I, this, of okay. course, is not really taking into account all the college guys who came in because you know right. we don't <laughs> I don't think any of us sort of are that closely observing the college game that we can talk with authority and any of those players coming in. So a few of them, like obviously with yeah. you know Trotter coming in, like he's a big name, but um a lot of the college players I think maybe going forward we might start like doing a little bit more doing uh, a deep dive. That, but, um there's just you know but uh yeah. So, what, what did you think did you, when you're looking at those names? Like, how how did you feel? And of course, Sobic beat Fujitsu barely, but they beat them in in the Pearl Bowl. Fujitsu wasn't really playing any of its frontline players, so um, yeah. When it, when, with, uh, I didn't really get a chance to see too much of of the spring stuff, but it, I'm like hmm. you when it comes to exhibition. When it comes to the practice, I mean, literally, they are the practice games. Hmm. Um, you always kind of have to kind of take them, you know, for what they are. It's basically a, a time where you can experiment, plug and play, see what's working, see what's not going to working. I'm sorry, see what's not going to work. And, you know, I mean, we've been, you know, since you and I have known each other, we have never known any other champion but the Fujitsu Frontiers or the Panasonic Impulse's runner-ups. So... <laughs> So, I mean, my expectation is, unfortunately, that we're going to be in the same spot come January 3rd watching those two teams play for the championship, but it is what it is. But as we move into the season, I sense that we're going to, you know, Obik mm. is making a play. You know, Obik is making a play to, to to get that number one spot more than we've seen in the last, really, four years. I mean... Um, obviously they, they let our buddy go. That was a tell, um, mm. you know, that was kind of the start of when I started, uh, predicting games against them, but mm. you know, I, I still hold, you know, my, a lot of my predictions were, you know, just rightfully justified. A lot yeah. of big fans gave me crap about it, but yeah. as we look at the rosters they are putting together this year, I see Obic definitely making a play for number two and being in that championship game you know, come January 3rd. I think you can say that the gap between Obik and Panasonic, if there was a gap, you know, I mean, it was, yeah. it was tall. anyway, I think that's a toss up. I, w- I would probably give the edge this year to Obik. I think the Seagulls are a little bit better mm-hmm. than Impulse. Um, I think Fujitsu still have the edge because even though they've lost a lot of players, I mean, they, they were definitely a better team, better coach yeah. team. The coaching is such a huge thing. We've talked about right. that. Right. That's what I was just going to mention. Yeah. Coaching. Yeah. The, the, the whole element of coaching, and we've seen this in, you know, professional college football back in the States and everywhere mm-hmm. else. That's the difference. That, yeah. yeah. What turns a good team into a great team. And yeah. you um, see it in Mexico, you see it in Europe, you see it, you know, yeah. at all levels of the game. So top class coaching makes a massive difference. You just get the most out of your talent. Yeah. Um, just looking, Greg, so you saw that thing that I sent you looking at the different positions. So I think we can look at the three teams side by side and, yeah. you know, I'm position by position. So if we look at, uh, the quarterbacks, okay. Yeah. So I, you can, you can give your own opinion, but my, my thoughts on this is Takagi is 
obviously still the start of Frontiers, one of the best quarterbacks, arguably the best quarterback in the league. I know some people right. be, you know, have very strong feelings that that's not the case, but I think he... I know he's on, you know, a team that has an incredible amount of talent around him, both up front yeah. on the offensive line and, you know, in pass catching and, you know, running backs, all the rest. But still, I think right. he's been an excellent quarterback. Yeah. And he's well, performed better he, even than the Americans. Yeah, he reminds me of one of those quarterbacks. I mean, if you look at the, the statistics from last year, <clears throat> he ranked number seven right behind Aaron in passing hmm. for the league. Hmm. And at first glance... You know, without knowing without knowing anything about where you know about Fujitsu or how they you know the team itself, hmm. you wouldn't think much of it. But when you consider, yeah, like you said, the talent around him, he's a guy yeah. that doesn't have to throw the ball all the time. He doesn't have doesn't to worry. Know. about Yeah, but he he is very good at it. Um, he's yeah, very he accurate. Is. He's he takes care of the ball. I think you know he's he's an experienced veteran at this stage. Right. Well, and he's got a great line too, and and that that plays into it. But he's yeah. got such a talented team; he's got different options. He's got yeah. there are different weapons in offense to move that ball, not just his arm. So, just looking at the quarterback position, I would say Frontiers are one, Seagulls two, yeah. uh, Impulse three. So, Seagulls obviously Tyler is there. Tyler Kalka came back mm-hmm. second year with Dobic. I expect him to actually take a fairly significant jump. Obviously, last year was his first year playing pro ball, first year abroad. Um, you know, very new situation. He seems to have really gelled with that team. Came, you know, we talked a lot last year about how Seagulls had always gone for big name quarterbacks. You know, mm-hmm. they had uh, Jason even on the roster played quarterback at Auburn, I think. Uh, now he's a defensive back for them, but they had Jimmy Lockray, they had, you know, Ikaika, they had... Uh, so who is it... Uh, I forgot the name of the blonde guy from UCLA. And I can't think of him off the top of my head. Yeah, they had also like West Virginia. They had Skyler. So they had, um, God, I, that's, uh, God, I can't remember his name. But like they, they've always kind of gone for big name mm-hmm. or, you know, big college quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, and they've also, they've also gone after some other players. I think David Pindell has talked about how they wanted him and, and stuff like that. So it was kind of unusual that they brought in an AIA quarterback especially one from such a a small school you know like not a not even a, a well known program we'll say right. in the NAIA so but uh, i think he there were some rocky moments obviously but i think tyler exceeded expectations you know maybe those expectations were low i think there's one of the things you can learn there is it's not always about the college there are all kinds of re- reasons that a player yeah. doesn't play at a certain level you know right. it can be anything to do with just family situation politics all kinds of stuff can you know financial there's all kinds of reasons that players do or don't make it at, at every level of, of football. And, there's, so, and there's also the added factor too as at the smaller schools yeah. um and i think aaron can probably speak to this better than i can but mm. you get more you get more attention you get hands on it um the coaching sometimes, from what I've heard from guys that were at big name colleges and go to smaller colleges, the smaller mm-hmm. colleges, the coaching's better because it's more, you get more attention. It it's more. Yeah, personal. it can be the case. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's just not really a, a fish finding the fish, and I think Tyler's right. Trying to yeah, I was going to say that's a, that's the big thing. If you're at a small school and yeah. it's the right fit, it's the right fit. So I think Seagulls is the right fit for him. He seems yeah. to enjoy it, has a good relationship with the players there. I think he got a lot better as the year went on last year. Still not, you know, perfect by any means, but yeah. um, I've been impressed. I think he's performed much better than I expected. I think even though he's coming from U.S. college football, the NAIA, I don't think is the same level as, you know, the adults of, we'll say, impulse or frontiers i mean that's a mm-hmm. different level of football i think you're talking about grown men and a lot of them you know you have players who played the cfl nfl off season you know a lot of guys who would be if japan had a fully professional league they would be you know top level pros at, at that level too so yeah um but still i think i have a feeling he'll step it up even better this year so i 
And Impulse, as we said, you know, they've lost one of their two. They don't have an American quarterback coming in. I, they don't have a quarterback of the level of Takagi or, or even, you know, Masamoto at, at IBM. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I, you know, so one, two, three, I think Frontier yeah, Seagull. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. For running back. Yeah. Or do you want to no, do you want to add something on the quarterback stuff or no, no, no. I'm just gonna say with running backs, I mean, until Treshawn uh Nixon retires, he's always gonna be number one in our book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, thought, I was looking at this. I think you can say that I mean like all of them are number one. So like I think yeah, they they all have you know incredible talent. Treshawn obviously is one of the greatest players ever to play in Japan. He was one of the best linebackers, edge players, he was, you know, all X selection for years and then switched mm-hmm. running back and became, you know, Eric Dickerson on the other side of the line. But, um, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, obviously... Obik, that's a good That's a good comparison. Yeah. Well, I said his his running style always reminded me of Eric Dickerson. That's kind of upright gliding style. But, yeah. Um, Obek, obviously, have Takuli. You know, Impulse have, you know, Jamal, Victor Jamal. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm just blanking there. Tatsukawa, they have oh, what is the name of the other guy? That's Fuji. Uh, I was gonna say Fujitani. No, I can't remember. Um, played for Japan against Fujimoto. Take it. Wait, what? Yeah. I'm looking at the list here. You're looking at Panasonic. Uh, he played, um, f- for Japan against the Spring League. What is his name? Um, I it, uh, that's gonna hold on. Let me just. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get this now. Uh, let's see. What's his name? Yeah, Fujimoto. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Um, so I think they have more strength in depth. I think they have right. They have several good running backs. Several top class running backs. I think obviously with Fujitsu Treshawn is the main man. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone even close to him on that roster no. or that position. No. Obik, they have one of the Nishimura uh what is this? Nanato Nishimura, uh the younger brother of Aruto. So he's he's a very good running back as well. I I, I don't mind saying they're all at one, but I think that you know one injury could derail frontiers or seagulls running game but i think it yeah. holds a little bit more strength and depth there so they're all have we'll say number one level but maybe mm-hmm. panasonic would be with the, maybe with a star because they'd be you know i think there's more depth there basically. yeah i agree with you i mean you just look yeah. you look at the stats from last year just mm. you know i they it's very much in in many ways more a running back by committee mm. Yeah, and so with that depth, I mean, just looking at the numbers, I mean, just looking at Trayshawn, I was just didn't even realize this until looking at the numbers again. Mm-hmm. But he had what 347 yards, four TDs, um, and only 28 carries. Mm-hmm. Number two on that list had 47 carries for less yards. Yeah, yeah. Trayshawn so, is, you know, Trayshawn is old time. He's basically yeah, 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 yeah. But it is, yeah. it's one of those numbers that just pops out at you, going, oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow, I mean, and that's you know, uh, you know, the running back that, at least in Japan is still a is yeah. still a thing. Yeah, he is. You know, he it's, the Otani comparison is a legitimate one. He's yeah. a top tier on offense and defense. I think there's very few players nowadays who are like that. Um, and if needed, okay, so, he could go back to defense. Yeah, <laughs> wide receiver. <laughs> Yeah, I, you're right on this, man. I'm looking at I'm looking at your ranking. You're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I think for despite the losses, you know, Fujitsu and are still they're a number one. I think Obik as well. You have to put yep. them in number one. They have they have so much talent as well. Impulse have just lost so much, you know. It's it's you know, Kido and Shea Fields at the same time, and then they lost uh Jamal last year as well, Watanabe. So it's it's really I have them at three. Obviously, like yeah. I, I think yeah, they're not two because I think give the other two an equal number one, but 
I think there's a difference. There's definitely a level difference between Obik, Fujitsu, and uh, Panasonic mm -hmm. in the wide receiver category. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Though it is yeah. interesting with the stats from last year. Um, yeah. You know, most of your your leaders were from teams that were not named Panasonic, Fujitsu, or Obik. If you just look yeah, at Yeah, you have like and, Boogie, obviously. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So those, those are, you know, yeah. you have the the absolute standout American receiver. That, yeah. That's a, when it, especially when it's a shorter season. Right. And, you know, you but, have the games where they just go off for, you know, 200 yards and, you know, 15 yeah. catches three touchdowns and stuff like that that happens so that yeah. skews stats in a, in a short season but you know obviously devin mm -hmm. is a, you know an outstanding yeah. receiver uh boogie nice is an outstanding receiver there, there's great talent everywhere else yeah but on those teams like challengers and silver star obviously there isn't the same kind of talent level across the board so they're right right know, they're uh, trying to carry the entire load yeah 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 it's it's like that uh in terms of tight end so this is the only one really where Fujitsu, I had them at last of the three. Um, I had Obik at number one, Impulse at number two. And mm -hmm. so Obik, obviously, you know, they've Holden and, um, you know, Maury's back, as I said, but mm -hmm. they they have some good players. Uh, I think Impulse, some good players. Fujitsu's tight end situation they always kind of do well, but I I don't think it's quite stacking up the other two. Um, yeah, just looking at they have a, they have good players and guys coming in as well. But I just I think Seagulls and Impulse just have a little bit. Well, Seagulls obviously number one, Impulse number two. Is it in how they number utilize? Number well, let me ask you this: Is it in hmm. term just how they utilize the tight end position? Is is that is that part of it? Uh no. So for this, I'm just. These one, two, three rankings that I'm using is just looking at the talent that's on the roster okay. at, at that position. Okay. And even with because I, I know some going, teams yeah. use the tight end more for blocking than yeah, receiving, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, and that's that was that was yeah. why I was asking. No, I mean I do think that Obik has to throw the ball to hold him more. I don't right. think that. I mean that's it's almost criminal sometimes that he's not used. You know, he's obviously missed some games and there's different reasons, but mm -hmm. a player of his abilities and height and just lengths, like in the red zone, he should be, I mean, target number one all the time. But I mean they have a they have a lot of good pass catchers, so it's it's not an issue. But I I think Holden Holden Huff, we're talking about here, former Boise State player, he's always been underutilized, I think, since he's come to Japan. I think they haven't really ever maximize i mean he could be he should be more than what john stanton was you know right. you, you can you should have games where it's like holes and it's catching 10 12 passes you know mm -hmm. uh on much more regularly but it just doesn't seem to happen for whatever reason okay um okay and then o-line yeah the i mean o-line yeah. is i agree mm -hmm. i agree i mean just it's hard for me to argue against your numbers. It always is because you're, well, you're more on the know than I am. Yet, so nobody knows what you're. No, with. no, but I'm agree. I'm I'm looking at your numbers. Like, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Okay, so <laughs> I have Impulse and Frontiers joint one and yeah. Seagull three. I think Impulse obviously they lost. Uh, let's see who did uh, so they lost Abutani and. Mm -hmm. Fujitsu lost Usui and Kobayashi, you know, massive blows. But I think the big thing, obviously, for Fujitsu is the coaching. You know, they have yeah. Kevin Leitner, and I think mm -hmm. they're so well coached on the offensive line, and they just have so much strength and depth. Just it's ridiculous sometimes, like, how many good offensive line players. They just cycle through them, you know. So yeah. many big names on that line have just retired, and they just keep replacing them with yeah. stars. Um, oh, and then you, when you're watching them on TV, I mean, it's just mm -hmm. they come out of the huddle. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. The, it's, you know, it just it's it's right there in front of you, going, mm, yeah. It's gonna be a long day for the, the the team that they're playing. That is the the engine of Fujitsu. You know, that line and then Treshawn behind them. It's just yeah, you know, that's how they win. Um, Panasonic as well. Just have some monsters up front. Um, Obik. 
Hmm. Oh, they have some. I mean, obviously, I don't know how, how good Dexter Carr is. Dexter Carr Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, they have some solid players, but I don't think they're quite at the level of the other two up front. I mean, they used to have. I think they used to have more talent. Say, if you went back through four years, five years ago, maybe you, there was an argument there. Their line was just as talented as the other two, but. I think it dropped off a little bit, you know. They lost some yeah. some big names. I don't think they quite replaced them. But on the other side of the ball, the D line, I think they definitely they're up there. So I just I have all three teams marked at number one on D line. Mm -hmm. I think there's just there's just defensive line talent across the board on all three teams. Um would you take to I think the reason I put Obik uh joint first is they have listed Sugano and Sean Ray Trotter as defense. Uh, well, Sugano is listed as a linebacker, I think, maybe. Or maybe he's listed as D-line. I'm not sure. But um, they'd be coming off the edge as well anyway. So I just I think they have a lot of young rising players. They have the two big guys, obviously, in the center, the two defensive tackles. The veterans have been there forever. But, uh, yeah, there's just, you know, an imp <laughs> as like Aaron said, like he's never felt as much peer pain and fear in his life as when he had to play yeah. Panasonic and Frontiers, yeah. like Joe and all oh, the other guys as well. You know, there's a lot of veterans on the on Fujitsu's defensive line as well. Yeah, yeah. I think there's there's no weaknesses really on all on any of those teams. Like their no. defensive lines are are all solid. No, Just, I mean it's every all three teams have a wall. I mean it's a wall. Yeah, you know. It's yeah. you know I wouldn't say it's reminiscent of the Steel Curtain or the '85 Bears, no, no. But no, I, when you're a young no, guy, you know, I mean, you know, Aaron has told us this, and he goes, you know, that was a chance. I mean, it was he had a long day and 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 facing those big those big lines. So yeah, you know, I think um, yeah, there you can make different arguments for which team is better, which team has more right. talent. But I think there's just looking from a talent perspective, um, yeah. I think all yeah. three of them are close enough in terms of talent to be ranked the same. So, yeah. Uh, and then, and then, oh, well, yeah. No, I was going to say, and then right behind it, you got the linebacking position, which, um, mm. you know, Fujitsu is not missing a beat at all on the linebacker. Yeah, this one was a little bit, I took a little bit of time to kind of, I was, Fujitsu have some solid. I think Fujitsu have like at least two really good names. So Shoki Cho and um, I should, you know, Yam uh, Yamagishi. So I should have brought, I should have brought the, the names up here. But um, it also with impulse and and stuff with like which positions they're playing. There's often with impulse. It's often like the safeties are, well, they're not box safeties, but they've always had safeties that kind of like hybrid linebackers. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's um, uh, let's see, so what was it? Uh, I can't remember the name of. It. I just not tonight. I, I'm blanking on everything. Yeah, I'm looking. Um, I can't think of it either. So I know. I, I know. I, I know. I know now, but they also had. Um, he played for. He played also in the game. He just retired a couple of years ago. What was his name? Was it? I, I keep on to say. No, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. But um, well, it's bad tonight. I definitely I am <laughs> I'm, I'm lacking on sleep. But I always felt with Panasonic, there, there's more of a sort of like overlap between the linebackers and the, and the safeties or the defensive yeah. back in the center of the field anyway. Um, but I just, depending on how they list them or where they're playing, I feel like maybe who did they lose? Um, yeah, linebackers really. Was, so Takeuchi obviously was gone from Fujitsu and Hirosawa has gone from Obik. There isn't a big difference, I think, between any of the three teams. I listed them as Fujitsu one, Obik, uh, sorry, Panasonic two, Obik three, but I think that. Maybe Seagulls, the only reason they're three is like they probably don't have the top star, like the big name star linebacker yeah. that the other two teams have. So, but there isn't a huge amount of difference. Um, I think with this we're one, talking mostly, fractions of an inch, talent. basically. Yeah. yeah. And it depends, of course, on how many players you're playing and like how you, yeah, 
how you define line. I mean, edge players these days are, you know, they're a different thing. So if you're, if you're just playing two players on the field or, you know, nickel or whatever, so it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to sort of like to define that role. It's like, I guess really just like the middle linebackers, you know, yeah. of old, but um, anyway, I don't think there's a huge difference. And I don't think it's, it's obviously not the position that it used to be in football. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's diminished a little bit, like the running back position too, a bit, but it's, uh, Anyway. Linebackers are turning more into safeties and cornerbacks in many ways. Yeah, the role is evolving, the, and the number yeah. of players, you know, they're it's kind of. I think most teams now tend to play with just two. So you're playing, um, you know, five defensive backs, mm-hmm. um, and then just two linebackers, maybe. But anyway, uh, defensive backs. Speaking of defensive backs. I give the edge to Impulse here. I have them in number okay. one. And I have Frontiers and Seagulls as joint number two. Still a lot of talent across the board. Um, but I think, you know, Fujitsu losing Ade is... Yeah. That well, could be a season defy. I think uh, his impact has... It's you know, almost underrated. It seems like such a weird thing to say. Um, but he's been just such... You know, it's a shutdown corner, right? It's, right. you know... Daryl Rivas, or it's, you know, um, just that completely shutting down one side of the field for the best part of a decade. So it's, yeah, it's, 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 be... the, it's the area of the field where quarterbacks never threw because they knew who was out there with, with the magic mitt catching, you know, yeah. ca- you know. So I agree with you there. I mean, it's going to be, that's an adjustment. That's a major, yeah. major adjustment. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But mm-hmm. it's, you cannot replace a player of that quality. So I have Fujitsu at number two, joint with Seagulls and Impulse at number one. I think Impulse still have more strength and depth across the back. Uh, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Akiyama has gone as well from them. So, you know, that's, that's another one. And then, you know, special teams kick and punt. And I think they all have, you know, solid players. I think joint number one for all of them. And then just the coaching thing, I think Frontiers is still just a step ahead. Seagulls impulse for both number oh, two. Oh, yeah. yeah. Frontiers number one. So yeah. Um if you're if you're tallying up all the numbers, so obviously a lower number is better because right. you want to I, I had think Frontiers were 13 and Seagulls and Impulse were joined second on 17. Which okay, you know, I don't know if there's that big of a gap anymore. I think the coaching is such a big thing. It maybe there is, but I think the overall gap might have closed a little bit this year. So we could have a new champion, maybe. I don't know. I I would still, I, if you had to, if you forced me at gunpoint to, to bet my my house on one of them, I would still go with Frontiers yeah. to win it all again. Yep. But I have a sneaking suspicion that Seagulls will be Close, like they were close enough last year. You know, they've, they've been close yeah. anyway the last few years. But I, you could see another Obic win. Panasonic, I think. Ooh, it's a, I mean, they still have so much talent all across. You know, as well, they lost. Um, so Les Maro has gone to the Edmonton Elks, is right? Edmonton Elks, maybe. So yeah. like he was supposed to be with them all this year. Um, so they lost that. You know, linebacker talent as well. But just, yeah. The the thing for me, as we said before, like the passing game, where is the passing game going to come from? From impulse, I I don't know. Mm. Are they going to use the running backs more, more screens? I'm not really sure how that's going to work. But um, do more West Coast offense than. But again, who's going to be under center for them? You know, yeah. <laughs> like uh, what the depth chart looked like at quarterback for Panasonic. I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that the yeah, the passing game a little bit. I think, and then for Frontiers, obviously, losing so much talent, so so much big name talent, mm-hmm. maybe put them down a little steps. Oh, yeah, impulse like Obik. I think if you can have a dark horse, as <laughs> like you know, it, it's strange to say, like, the, the most successful team in the history of the X League is a dark horse, but um, yeah. I don't know. It's. I think it'll be a little bit more interesting this year. 
in once yeah, it, yeah I think I think so too. I'm looking forward to the season, especially too, since we've got you know six regular season games versus mm. three. Mm. It it'll feel at least for you know guys like you and I. Hey, it's like kind of like an American season where when we had the three games, it mm. just I it was just it just had a different feel when it came to football. It's nice yeah. having six games. I mean. You know, growing up as, you know, playing high school football and playing, you know, mm-hmm. midget football. I mean, we had six games and, you know, the seventh game was a championship. High yeah. school, we had nine, you know, I think we had eight, eight or nine games. So closer to what most people who, you know, if you're watching, if, if you're living in Japan mm. and you're new to Japan and you're looking for a football fix, um, you've got the X League. You can go to Gridiron Japan TV. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go to gridironjapan.jp. The link, mm. the links are there to to watch the games. Uh, RTV. It is a mm. paid for service, so all the Exley games are. You know, it's about ten bucks a month. Um, I th- I don't know how much. It's like what maybe about two hundred twenty thousand yen for the the yearly package. But yeah, we can build that up close to the actual seat. So this yeah, is yeah, but anybody's but the reason why I was bringing that up, and just in terms of people, um, just right now, want to know, hey, where where can we hmm. find it? And you know, and, yep. and take a look and see what we've been talking. See, take a look, take a look and see what we've been talking about. Um, but yeah, it'll be more of a it'll have a more of a regular season feel this year, is what I was trying to say. Yeah, and that season is starting at the end, the very end of this month, I think, is the first game, right? Uh, yep, let me see, the month, August yeah. 31st, yep. Mm-hmm. August 31st season starts, so it, there's different divisions in Japan, but the top division plays six game regular season, and essentially games are every second week. You know, every other week, I think, is how right. I can say it, right? Pretty so, much the second and fourth weekend of the month. Yeah, basically, basically, that's how it's kind of going. So, for example, we'll just take Fujitsu. They play August 31st, September 16th, September 29th, October 13th, October 27th, and November 9th. So that's their regular season. And then the end of November is the quarterfinals, and the middle of December is the semifinals, and then January 3rd is the Rice Bowl championship game so yeah end of this month so i think next time we'll do that kind of second group perhaps yeah. ibm nojima and elecom yeah i think they've been the sort of second group that like nipping at the heels maybe of but not quite managing to I, ibm obviously have done better than the other two in recent years but like there's a kind of semi-final type teams you okay. expect them to maybe make one of them to make it to the semi-final so which the middle be? So we'll talk about those three next time. And there's a lot of interesting stuff, actually. It's a lot more, once you get outside the top three, things get a lot more uncertain. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot to talk about with those three. And, and the we're games, still waiting. And the games involving those. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Go No, go ahead. I, ta- I was talking over you. I apologize. No, it's just uh, saying we're still waiting. I think Fine is the only team that hasn't released a roster yet. Um it's driving me nuts. Like I'm trying to get all this stuff ready, and still, they haven't released. I well, I I think they haven't yet. Anyway, I haven't seen it. So they're the only I top division team yet. I think that I haven't seen a roster from. Let me just uh, player. Yeah, it still says coming soon on their website. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. And I've heard a lot of the rumors of the players going in that, but like a lot of the nothing is really confirmed yet. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's the that's the top three as things stand. So we might have a, a little bit of a more open competition this year at the top. Yeah, and those teams are always the most entertaining to watch because those games can mm-hmm. go either way. And you know, many times, you know, you, me, BJ, Aaron mm-hmm. was like, "Hey, are you watching this game?" Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Go turn it on because it's you know it's not the result that we were expecting, and uh, so entertaining football. The only shame of it, of course, is that they don't face each other. We have to wait until probably the semifinals in the Rice Bowl. Yeah. But then again, I guess when they do face each other in the regular season, they don't show a lot either, you know. So they know right. that they wait till crunch time. So yeah. it would be a huge surprise if those three teams don't make up three quarters of the semifinal lineup. So right. So it's always um, the matter. It's a question of who gets that 
that fourth spot. That's what yeah. uh, it seems like we've talked about pretty much every year. Who's going to get that fourth spot? Yeah. 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 And there's always, you know, I mean, in <clears throat> Nojima and Big Blue have overcome, you know, Panasonic, they've overcome Obik. Neither of them has overcome Fujitsu in, in a game that counts, but they, they've beat Nobik at in important games. Big Blue obviously have made two finals. Yeah. Three finals, actually, I think they made. But um yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. that's the top three. All right. Well, listen, hey, on that note, everybody who's watching, thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're doing the live stream or you're doing the the, the recording after after we've uh we've all gone to bed here in Japan and, and watched it. Um real quickly here, we're at uh gridironjapan.jp and uh all our socials are down at the bottom of this feed, and I've included the socials in our podcast link, too, if you're just listening on audio. So, hey, on behalf of John and myself and Aaron, I'm sure Aaron is sleeping somewhere, but on hey, behalf hey. of Aaron, too, <laughs> thank you very much for uh, for tuning in, and we will be talking to you very, very soon. So, from Japan, uh, hang on, I'm grabbing, grabbing the wrong mouse here. Uh, from Japan. Uh, thank you very much for listening and tuning in and we'll be talking again to you talking again to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>